Welcome, I'm Dragon. Recently, I was asked to make a video explaining a math equation of how to get standard form and then vertex form, starting with this equation. So instead of just doing a standard video, I made this into an animation using Blender, just because I thought it would be more interesting, and it's Blender. I love Blender. But before I show you how I made it, here's the end product. And maybe you'll understand this a little better if you didn't already remember it or haven't done it already. So to start, we will need to distribute the x and the x and the x and the negative 6 to get y equals x squared minus 6x. Then we do negative 4 times x and negative 4 times 6x. This leaves us with y equals x squared minus 6x minus 4x plus 24. This almost gives us the uh, standard form, but we still need to combine like terms, which then gives us y equals x squared minus 10x plus 24, which is the standard form. Then to start getting the vertex form, we start by subtracting 24 from both sides, which leaves us with y plus 24 equals x squared minus 10x. We then take the negative 10 from the negative 10x and divide it by 2 and square it. So that leaves us with 25. We then add 25 to both sides and are left with y plus 49 equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now we can move on to factoring. So the factors of 25 are 1, 25, 5, and 5. And since only 5 and 5 can add up to negative 10, those are the factors we're going to use. We also split the x into two x's since it's squared, which then leaves us with y plus 49 equals x minus 5 and then x minus 5 again, but in parentheses. This can be simplified by going y plus 49 equals x minus 5 squared. And then because we need y alone, we can subtract 49 from both sides, and we get our final answer of y equals x minus 5 squared minus 49. And now the equation is in vertex form. This is useful because we can now pull out the vertex from this equation, which is 5 and negative 49. Well, thanks for watching. So yeah, there we have it. I think it turned out pretty decent, and I did get a 100 on the assignment, which is pretty nice since it was worth a lot of points. But you're probably wanting to see how it was made, and actually, it was using some basic concept, but just took a little while, around 4 to 8 hours in total. A couple of these hours were probably just learning curves better though, because I did end up using them a lot. But here in Blender, you can see that I just used the basic text with the next added fonts and animated the text and added a build modifier for the transitions. This is basically the same for all of the text, but occasionally I would animate it a little differently. And then for the curves, this is what took me a little while to learn, is that you have to go to the curve properties and play around with those. Specifically, that the end part of the curve is what I ended up animating, and you could see that the taper object made the curve look a little better, which was connected to this other curve that kind of smooths out the ends. I then continued this and kind of copied and pasted it, and basically with the curves, I made it so that when you're in camera view, it looks kind of how I was expecting. For example, the arrow doesn't necessarily completely look like an arrow until you go into camera view. I also checked fill caps so that it would actually fill the caps when it's animated. And then with the thing circling the standard form equation, you could see that it's not even connected, but when in the camera view animation part of it, it did actually look connected. I also just used the curves to play around with them to rotate them and move them around, which made for some cool effects like the spiral effect when I circle the equation. But basically, I continued doing this until I finished this math equation using Blender, which was pretty fun to do. And then for textures, I, I did actually make a custom, t a custom textures, which was a nice to do because I'm not necessarily the best at doing textures, but was able to make a pretty cool one for the arrow. At least I think it was kind of cool. Originally that arrow texture was going to be same with the standard just white emission, but I didn't do that because it didn't look quite as good as I was hoping. But I was glad it worked out for the arrow. 
And then the final texture I did was for all the text, which I just did a simple one, connecting color ramps and textures, and then adding a little noise bump. And overall, I think the entire animation turned out really well, and I was happy I got to do it. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video, and maybe you can do something like this for an assignment that you have, if you want to. Well, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye!